Hey, what's up guys? I'm Don P from Don P Sounds, and today we're going to be making a modern R&B beat. But before we get started, please make sure that you like and subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand followers by the end of the month, so I need everyone to help me out. All right, let's get started. So I've pulled up some sounds here from a product called No Tears that's going to be releasing pretty soon, and it has some really cool chord progressions, keys, things of that nature, some nice drums, and I chopped everything up and kind of laid everything out to where I would be able to kind of rearrange everything and make my own melody. So let's check out the keys first. That's the progression that I'm going to play. So let's go ahead and record that, and then we're going to build around that main melody. It just holds. It's just a whole chord, allowing the piano to sound fuller. To, it makes it sound like it has more dimension, and you get some of that ear candy in there. It's just a simple arpeggiated chord on E minor. So let's go ahead and move on to some drums. All right, the first thing that I want to do on the drums is add some low end. It'll pull the keys together and solidify everything on the bottom end of the beat. So I have some... 808s that I've kind of chopped up and tuned. And I'm going to mess with the timing and the melody a little bit. So there we go with the 808. We kind of have it moving now, and that starts to pull everything together. And you really need that 808 in modern R&B. If you don't have an 808, I suggest you go and get a sample pack with some really good 808s because that's really what modern artists and modern labels and everyone are looking for right now, that 808 sound. And that's kind of replaced the bass, which held R&B together years ago. So let's go ahead here and add some more drums. Uh, kick, snare, hi-hat, and see what we get. All right, so we got a nice little drum pattern starting here. You can see I, I hit that attack, that bump, 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 bump with the kick and that just kind of reemphasizes it and makes it sound really hooky and together. So let's add some hi-hats here. All right, that's really cool. We got some cool hats going there and I went between Eighth notes, sixteenth notes, and then I went up to uh, one thirty second triplet. All right, next we're gonna add a triangle. It's kind of ear candy, and we're gonna put it on the snare. So when people are listening to it, it's something that's consistently grabbing their attention inside of the beat. All right, let's record that. drum so we can get this thing popping just a little bit more. There we go. All right, I have an acoustic guitar. I like to intertwine live instruments in a lot of my beats because it makes it sound more professional. 
and it also makes it sound uh, more interesting. It catches people's ear. If you're going to be competing to sell beats or to get placements, you want to make sure that uh, your productions are modern, but you also want to make sure they're full enough uh, to be different than the competition. All right, let's add... I like that lick right there. Let's get it. It's nice, very nice. And it's gonna make everything turn around really smooth as well. And while we're speaking of the turnaround, let's go ahead and put a symbol on the top of our loop. putting a symbol or like a sweeping effect at the top of my loops or towards the end of my loops to make them turn around a chorus and kind of give you some separation between a chorus verse B section however you want to structure your song all right so let's go in and add some vocals I chopped up some vocals uh, from the sweet honey product and I have them here <laughs> That's really nice. Yeah, that's sounding really good. So let's hear this beat in context. And what I'm going to do is Go and take a look at my mixer, and I'm going to make some adjustments. Okay, so what we're going to do is pan the vocal to the right. We don't want it up the middle because we want to create space and room for a rap artist or a singing artist to have their vocal sit in front of the mix. Sometimes I see mixes or see beats where everything is, is straight up the middle. That's a problem. You, you, you want to use your panning, pan things out to create more space in your beats and your mixes. So let's put the vocal over to the right and pull it down a little bit. That acoustic guitar is kind of getting lost in the keys. So we'll put that far to the left, bring it down just a bit. We'll keep the keys in the middle and we'll keep the drums in the middle for right now. But what I would usually do is break out the drums uh, when I'm preparing for mixing and uh, pan the hi-hats to the left, the cymbal, uh, to the right more than likely depending on where I want it in the stereo image and, and depending on how many symbols I have and how quickly it comes inside of the uh, production. So let's hear this. That's a really cool R&B beat. That's something that is going to stick with the times, be modern, and it has some really cool sounds in it. But you see the difference between a balanced mix, even just making small adjustments, spreading the stereo field out, and having everything up the middle. So that's something to really take from this particular video in addition to the production techniques. You want to think about where each sound is going to fit inside of a mix. It might not be your job as a producer to mix, but it's definitely your job to think about the next person's job, the mixer. And you have to give them enough instruments to, to make the track big, but you also have to make sure that you have an idea of where those instruments should go in the mix. Please like and subscribe and comment below. Thanks. See you.